hello friends welcome you all in the last lecture we are discuss the requirements of good aggregate then the classification of aggregate according to source size and shape now in this lecture we are going to discuss the impurities in the aggregate okay so what are those impurities let us see aggregate that contains the excessive amount of tannic acid or vegetable matter or oil or human acid or sulfate or carbonic acid alkali salts are considered to be a harmful this presence of these harmful substances prevents the proper adhesion of cement on the surface of aggregate and thus affect the properties of concrete adversely so these uh, impurities are further classified uh, as the organic impurities and inorganic impurities in organic impurities uh, it contains the decayed vegetable matter or organic clay then decayed animal matter so it affect on the setting time and the strength of concrete so if organic matter exceed the limit then the fine aggregate is either rejected or it is completely washed before using then inorganic impurities mainly contains the silt and clay this clay and silt if exceed can be easily removed by washing the sand so these uh, some following impurities we see may be present in the fine and coarse aggregate individually or in combination so first is silt and clay then decayed vegetable matter and humus salt stone dust coal and lignite mica and shale so these all impurities present on uh, in aggregates Uh, both fine or coarse aggregate individually or in combinations so what are the effect of these impurities in the aggregate on concrete let us see the effect of impurities in aggregate on concrete first that is silt and clay this silt and clay impurities mainly present bond between the aggregate particles even with the higher water cement ratio hence concrete weakens pro proportionally so before using the uh, impurities or before using these aggregates the impurities on the aggregate that is silt and clay should be washed thoroughly that is aggregate should be washed thoroughly so these impurities will be removed okay next is the decayed vegetable matter decayed vegetable matter presents the process of the hydration and reduces the strength of concrete okay next is the salt salt the hydro hygroscopic nature of this salt causes the efflorescence efflorescence means the some slightly white uh, particles uh, we are seeing on the surface okay of the concrete then and it is unslightly appearance it affects the setting proper setting properties and the ultimate strength of concrete next is the stone dust if this present in excessive this dust result in the segregation and bleeding in fresh concrete and it reduces the strength of the concrete as well segregation means the particles are segregated okay means paste and the uh, sand or the aggregate is segregated from each other and bleeding means the there may be a cement place float on the surface of the concrete okay so this stone particle if we, it is in excessive then it reduces the strength of concrete as also okay then coal and lignite the impurities reduces the hydration and the bonding of aggregate particles it founds responsible to the decrease the strength and durability of concrete and lastly the mica and shale these deleterious materials uh, deleterious materials means uh, harmful materials okay also affect the concrete strength and this mica reduces the strength and durability considerably while shale gets the swell when wetted and it results in pitting in concrete so these all is the effect of impurities if it is present on the aggregate or in concrete okay so next point is the grading of aggregate so what is meant by grading of aggregate 
so it is the analysis of size of aggregate particles available in the given sample by sieve method we can call it as grading of aggregate these aggregates uh, compromise about the 55% of the volume of mortar and about 85% of 85% uh, volume of mass concrete okay so it well known that the strength of concrete is dependent upon water cement ratio provided the concrete is workable sorry concrete is workable so the important factor for producing workable concrete the uh, grading of aggregate should be good one okay so this uh, grading of aggregate implies that uh, sample of aggregate contains all standard fractions of aggregate okay in required proportions such that the sample contains minimum voids okay and it is further classified as the well graded aggregate uniformly or poorly graded aggregate and lastly the gap graded aggregate so let us see what is meant by well graded aggregate the aggregate sample which contains particles of all sizes that is finer to coarser in it such sample we, uh, we can say well graded aggregate or if uh, we are defined as we can also define it as if the particle of all sizes are present in the appreciable proportion then it is called as a well graded aggregate okay so for a good concrete work we require this well graded aggregate which provides the minimum voids okay which contains minimum voids next is the uniformly graded aggregate or we can call it as poorly graded aggregate okay the aggregate which contains particles of specially same or uniform size in it okay such soil is considered as uniformly graded aggregates so in the aggregate if the particles are of almost same size okay means if we are taken the uh, one sample that is 500 kg sample in this sample uh, we are uh, getting the aggregate size of same that is suppose all the aggregate of 20 mm and 10 mm size okay so we can call it as it is a uniformly graded aggregate okay next is the gap graded aggregate it is the aggregate in which particles of any specific sizes are available and other sizes are totally absent such sample be termed as gap graded aggregate okay so if a particular sieve size is not present in the aggregate okay they are called as gap graded aggregate okay such uh, sand which has a gap grading is generally not preferred to the sand which is uniformly graded okay so gap graded aggregate creates deficiency in the cohesiveness and permeability of the surface finish okay so for a good concreting work we require the well graded aggregate or we are avoiding this uniformly graded or gap graded aggregate okay so next is the properties of fine aggregates okay so what are those properties let us see first size second source third shape then the moisture content then the cleanliness then bulk density bulk density means what the density of aggregate considered along with the volume of voids between the particles then the fineness modulus then specific gravity then silk content and lastly bulking so let us see some of the uh, physical properties of the fine aggregates that is the first fineness modulus okay and this fineness modulus of fine aggregate we are uh, calculating by using the sieve analysis okay so firstly what is mean by this fineness modulus it is defined as the ratio of sum of cumulative percentage of weight retained on the various is sieves taken up to a 150 micron sieve divided by the empirical constant 100 okay so this fineness modulus we are getting by the ratio of cumulative percentage weight retained on the is sieves okay that is up to the 150 micron is sieve okay we are not get we are not uh, getting into account the 75 micron and fan okay uh, we are taken the up to the 150 micron is sieve okay 
so the cumulative percentage of weight retain on the where I assumes up to the 150 micron divided by the 100 we get the fineness modular okay here you can see the some different sizes of sieves we are arranging in the descending order this is sieve shaker okay so what is the procedure of this uh, calculating the fineness modulus so firstly we are arranging the set of IS sieves that is 4.75 mm 2.36 mm 1.18 mm 600 micron, 300 micron, 150 micron and 75 micron and lastly pan in descending order okay with coarser sieve at top and finer sieve at bottom okay here we we are seeing the fine aggregate so the maximum particle size should be a 4.75 micron okay we are knowing the what is meant by fine aggregate the size the particle size having the less than 4.75 mm mm we are calling as fine aggregates so we are arranging this is sieve in a descending order okay that is coarser sieve at top and finer sieve at bottom second then take the oven dried fine aggregate sand okay sample about 500 gram okay we are taking the oven dried sample okay for this oven dried oven dried sample we are kept the uh, temperature 110 plus minus 5 okay so take a 500 gram of sample that is oven dried sample then put it on the topmost sieve then place lid at top and pan at bottom okay of sieve that of sieve set respectively then keep this assembly on the mechanical sieve shaker or electrical sieve shaker and shake it for 15 to 20 minutes so that this stand will be completely sieved okay then this take the weight of the sample fraction retained on the each sieve separately and calculate percentage finer using the following format okay like this this is the sieve size in mm here 4.75 mm okay 2.36 mm 1.18 mm right in the descending order then weight retain on that particular is sieves in grams okay we are writing here then weight percentage of weight retain okay it is calculated by the weight retained divided by the total weight of that sample multiplied by 100 we get the percentage weight retained okay then lastly we are calculating the cumulative percentage weight retained okay and we are adding this uh, that is we are taking the sum of this cumulative percentage weight retained Okay, and divide it by 100 we get the fineness modulus of that sand okay then we are classified this sand uh, on the basis of this fineness modulus is fine sand if this uh, fineness modulus in between 2.2 to 2.6 we are calling as fine sand if it is in between 2.6 to 2.9 then we are classified as a medium sand and if it is in between 2.9 to 3.2 we are classified as a coarser sand okay so hope you will understand today's session uh, that's it for today's session thank you